Subscribe, drop your comments, please, because I got a whole perspective I want you to hear. Drop your comments below. Now let me get into it. You know, someone asked me and I, and I sparked the conversation in my DM. And it's from a popular podcaster. And um, it just sparked something. They saw my clip on um, Bag Fuel. Shout out to Heineken, shout out to Esso. And it was like, yo, that's like, you know, crazy that you did this shit with Heineken and Esso right after the math half of Fallout. And I'm like, uh, not particularly. That wasn't at the time that it was public. And it's really not that funny to me. <laughs> it's just like, whatever. Um, I don't think there's podcast beef. I don't think if niggas see each other, it's lit. Maybe I'm wrong, you know. But I wanted to dive in. Why do these podcasts that start to get traction break up? Math Hoffa, Esso, Heineken, right? Um, uh, Space Ghost, I don't know him, but you know, like with that. Then we got Joe Button, Rory Maul. And then there's other pods, but even if we just stayed on these two, um, again, I'm, I'm giving you my perspective. You feel me? I'd, I'd go on a leap and say that my perspective is facts. But even if half of the people agree, there's going to be another half that's going to be like, that's not true because it's going to make one side look right and one side not look right. But I look at it like this. Now, if y'all don't know who I am, um, I've broke artists from the bottom. I guess I've a and would it. I've believed it. I've believed in them really early. Helped produce records. I've co-written records with, with some of the artists that I've been around over the years. Um, it is what it is. Y'all have seen me. I've been tour DJing with everything, so I understand it. But there's one thing that I really understand from doing that. And the one thing that I understand from doing that is that Artists change when they get popping. They change. They could be like, yo, Punch, bro, I'm everything, bro. I promise you. I promise you, like, I'm, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be different. I promise you. No matter what you say, I'm going to be the one that's different. I promise. And it's always like, yo, trust me, I'm not going to be one of these funny, weird-ass rappers who get on and then misbehave. No, I promise. But what happens is, is that they're speaking from the angle of someone who broke, who don't got opportunities, who's not lit, who bitches don't want to fuck, well, who women don't want to have sex with, better. Um, and this is just not what it is. And then they get a record, and then all of a sudden they 10 times more handsome, <laughs> they 50 times more tougher, and the hood loves them 100 times more. And then it makes them change. See, when you broke and you don't have nothing, and you got to show for $1,000 and you got to give your manager his 20%, 15%. Let's use 20%. And that 1000 goes to 200 You're like, yo, man, here, take it, man. We eat and I got eight. You got two. It's lit. You broke. You appreciate it. Then you catch a little bit of money. You starting to get your little shows. Your little shows, and this is no disc. This is big money. But the little shows, where you get in a 10K show, those 10K shows, like, yo, here, take your 2K. It's lit. But then some starts to happen when it keeps raising. And then when you get to your $100,000 show and you got to give your manager $20,000, you like, whoa. What did you really do to get this hundred? I was the one sweating up there. It starts to get a little, trust me, I've seen it happen. Rappers switch up on their team all the time. That's why you see rappers fire people. You see people that was right hands with rappers. Rappers generally speaking, switch up. And I, I get it. Sometimes it's for the good. Sometimes it's for the bad. But they switch up because it's a lot to maintain when you become the breadwinner and now you're the one with the bag. And now everybody's like, yo, you're the one. And like I said, women are looking at you like you're the most handsome person in the world now. Now you Chris Brown, you know? Now you Chris Breezy. It's a whole different thing. Cool. So, um, you know what I mean? It starts to make a Mac weird. And I'm going to get to the podcast, but I'm, I'm leading it into something that we all commonly understand. Then I'm going to let it align with my perspective on the podcast networks. And then when an artist gets a million dollar deal and they go and they get that million dollar check and then they have to give their manager $200,000. When they get that million dollar check, 
They have to give their manager 200000 And sometimes if you get popping and you get a million dollar check, that deal might close in seven days. It might be something easy. It might be, yo, we love it. Um, here we go. We're, we're Ciroc. We're Don Julio. You get me? <laughs> we're Don Julio. And um, what we need to do right now is we need to do an alignment. We're going to give you your own personal spirit. You know, and you're going to be the new face of Don Julio. Here's a million dollars. And your manager just basically said yes, no, yes, no. Sent it to the lawyers. Lawyers closed the whole deal. But now you still got to give them 200000 for a couple of days of work. That's when it starts getting gray. Because a lot of artists, and I'm going to go to the extent and say majority of artists, start to change when that starts to happen. Now, if there's an artist out there that has not ever acted funny with the split, you are rare. Let's get this through to you. You are rare. I'm not saying all artists. I'm saying majority. I will say eight out of ten artists will switch when it is time to make those big splits. They switch. I have watched it happen. When you got to give your manager a piece of your feature money because that manager is supposed to get a percentage of what you gross in. And you like, the manager didn't lift a finger for this. Why are they getting a percentage? I know how this works. Oh, I know. See, at the beginning, your manager's running people down to get that feature. But then you get popping. And when you get popping, and all of a sudden the feature's coming to you, you're like, why do I got to split 20% with my manager? He didn't do nothing. I know how it goes. I've seen it. I've seen managers work their ass off, and I've seen artists spit directly in their face. I've seen it. The only way to protect this, the only way, well, two ways, of course. But one is contract. You know, have it all in writing. But number two is speak about all situations before you get popping. Yes, speak about all situations. You know, I was in a studio one time and there was three artists in there. And it was like, yo, listen, before anybody go to, if we get this record popping, we split in this 50%, 50% going to the producer and we split in this 16, 6, 16, 6, 16, 6, right? I believe it's 16, 6, right? That's how you go. Let me see something. Hold on. Nobody judge me. 50. 50 divided by 3 is 16.6. I'm correct. Because you get 50% to the producer, 15, 50% to the artist. Those three artists, 16.6% of the percent. Boom, done deal. Cool. Right? You know? Simple, right? Or, you know what I mean? It's simple. And then you discuss it. So that when it comes out, no matter who blows up from it, no matter who puts bread, no matter what, it's been discussed. I own a third of the music side of this. That's it. Now, I'm going to make it all make sense. I promise you I'm going to make it all make sense. Now, these podcast networks, in my belief, Joe Button, Rory, Rory, pardon me, no funny shit, Joe Button, Rory Mall, I believe, Mav Hoffa, Esso, Heineken, I believe, and I know people in all of these parts, but I genuinely believe it's because somewhere along the way, someone felt like someone didn't deserve their percentage. Somewhere along the way, someone believed, ah, they shouldn't be getting what they're getting. I don't believe it. You shouldn't be getting this. I don't believe it. I think you're getting too much. And then they took it upon themselves to either not inform them of something that's going on, not involve them of something that's going on and take a piece or not tell someone about this and take that. This happens because you start to go, yo, man, I'm the one who brought this liquor. I'm the one who brought this hat deal. And I'm saying shit that I know did not connect with it so that nothing is like specific events. I'm just giving you my perspective. And then someone goes, I don't really need you like that. I'm the reason why they come here. People like me more. I heard. And it gets to a point where it fogs your brain versus speaking about it at the beginning and then holding your ground concrete. I don't care if you become the star of the show. I don't care if the co-host becomes more important. I don't care who's the, I don't care. Whatever you agreed upon at the beginning, you got to treat these podcasts. And I think it's because podcasts, bro, I'm be right. I think it's because podcasts are looked at like it's just talking in the room with your friends and you don't have an audience when you start, you just record. I think that y'all not really taking it as serious as a hit record. I think that there's not a thought in the beginning, like we about to have the number one pod. So no one really concretes it. But if straight up and down, you are going to get this percentage no matter if we make $100, $1,000, or $1 million. That's when it goes wrong. It goes wrong because someone goes, I should be getting this as per what I've done. 
and then someone else goes, nah, then it gets a little shady, gets gray. And then because podcasts keep coming at such a rapid pace, it just makes the conversation get really, really distant. And then all of a sudden, 10 more episodes is out. And it's like, yeah, what to do? I don't know. And then just keep moving. I'm going to be almost sure that that's what started to happen. People started to act like someone was not who they were anymore. And that value just changed. And I think and I believe in my heart that that's really what happened. I believe in my heart that's what really happened. I swear. And it's whack and it's corny because at the end of the day, um, these pods were great with the people. Now, look at Joe Button um, with Rory and Maul. Now they got their big deal at Spotify. Joey still is doing what he does. Now he has ice and... Damn. And I'm not being... Ish. I wasn't being a sucker with that. Then we got now Heineken... And Esso, they got bag fuel. I know Esso has ear pollution with DJ Clue. I know Math already says that he's going his own way. Everybody will continue to go and spawn off and do more things. It's like artists who break out of groups and deals. But I think the real part of this is that why? Why do y'all think it happens? Please drop a comment below. Please. What do you think? Am I bugging? Is this, nah, it's just inevitable punch, too many personalities, some people don't matter, you should cut them off, or should it be discussed a lot more clear at the beginning so that there is no way that fog could actually raise up? Let me know what you think. Subscribe, all that is the airport is punch, right?